Now that we've got to see what some of the plots that we can use to look at multivariate data are, let's take a chance and, and see how to build some out uh, in Python. Um, so we'll use matplotlib, and uh, we'll take a look at the data set from, again, from the vast challenge. Here we'll look at the second data set, um, which is the sensor data. Um, so this is from an array of sensors um, that sense the, the chemical output of various manufacturing plants. Um, so there are a number of different sensors and a number of different chemicals that, uh, that they're monitoring. So if you look at what the data is itself, uh, each row is a particular observation of one chemical at one time um, and, and what that reading value was. Um, so each monitor captures all four different chemicals. Uh, so we can see that there are four different chemicals um, at, at the same times. Um, so what we want to look at is um, if we want to look at how these very of how these chemicals move together, we can aggregate by the monitor, um, which which sensor it was, and the time at which it was recorded. So I've gone ahead and and wrote some of the code to pull together um, these observations. So really, it's just taking the data frame and grouping it by the the date, time, and the monitor um, that were used. Um, we can see at at each one of those, there's four chemical types. Um, and so when we go through these groups. Actually, one thing that, that comes up is not all observations have all four chemicals at the same time. Um, so we can see that actually the bad observations, there's 200 or so of them, and, and you know that could warrant some further investigation. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and do some visual analytics on, on the observations that do have all four and see if we can uh, look at how these values move together. Um, so there's a couple different plots we can use. Here, uh, we're gonna build out a scatter plot matrix and uh, we'll also look at a parallel coordinates. So a scatterplot matrix is, is pretty easy to build um, in matplotlib. It also exists in uh, various you know, uh, charting libraries. Um, here, we'll, we'll just build it out by hand to, to take a look at how that's done. Um, so you have four chemical types, so nvar equals four, and we'll, we'll set those as the chemicals. Uh, first, we need to create a figure object. Um, let's give it some size. So here, we'll make a, a 10 by 10, and uh, we want to we want to go ahead and plot each variable against each other. So we want to look at uh, AGOC3A versus AGOC3A. Um, so if we loop through each combination, um, we'll go ahead and use uh, IterTools product. Um, so we could you know do two loops for i in range of four, for j in range of four. Uh, this will just give us i j as a as a combination of those two ranges. Um, so we can see we get you know zero 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 one. Um, so just kind of a keep it inside of one loop. Um, we can go through all those. And for each combination, we're going to want to go ahead and uh, create a new uh, subplot on our figure object. Um, so here we'll use the plot.subplot command, um, and it needs the uh, width and height, the, the number of, of uh, figures you're going to use in the subplot, and then the index of this particular figure, which starts in the top left. Um, so I will let go across, and J will let go down. Um, and we could choose a different different combination to lay it out differently. On that subplot axis, uh, we can go ahead and uh, go ahead and make a scatter plot with the ith variable and the jth variable. So we'll look down uh, for all observations and at, at that particular uh, column, at the ith column versus the jth column. And there we go. We have our scatter plot matrix. Um, we can see that the uh, variables are well correlated with themselves. Um, and there's a number of patterns to observe here across these variable types. Um, definitely some some interesting things to look at. Um, we didn't normalize the ranges. Um, something we could do, um, could do, and of course it's going to be helpful for us to uh, know what the variable types are. So we want to label the give us some y labels and x labels. We really only need to put the y labels on the left side. So that's where i equals zero, the way that we were counting. Um, so we can go ahead when i is zero, set the y labels ourselves um, to be the the jth chemical. Um, and if J is at the bottom, so over the bottom of the plot, we'll set the X label um, to be the ith chemical. Um, so this will go ahead and give us oops, um, chems. This will go ahead and give us uh, X and Y labels uh, to dive more into this plot. Um, you know, if we want to get a little fancier too, we could turn off the uh, the tick labels on the internal ones because they're consistent. Uh, it's consistent, you know, for each chemical. So X for AGOC3A, when it's on the bottom, is, is all the same, of course. Um, so that gives us uh, some things to look at. We can see really some interesting patterns. One thing this is limiting in is that, you know, if we look at the data points where AGOC3A is, is on the X and it's kind of out on the right, 
we don't know if those are the same data points um, that are um, showing up in each plot because they could be um, they could be different data points. So what we want to actually know is um, we want to be able a way to tie those individual points together. Um, we could tie them together in the above plot with color, um, but what we're going to use here, um, let's go ahead and, and turn this into a uh, parallel coordinates. So rather than look at the individual values, we want to look at the groups of them. Um, so uh, in the matrix that we created, we actually want to look at rows. So we don't need any of this code. Um, we'll just go ahead and plot um, just an index, so the index of the variable. So we'll just range of length of chems, so just 0 through 3. And uh, we'll look at one row. So we'll look in observations and look across that. Um, so this is going to go ahead and plot each of those rows with their y values. So here on the 0, these are all the values for the AGOC3A. Um, and uh, you know each 1 and 2 and 3 are the other chemicals. Um, we can go ahead and, and add these labels. I'm um, using the x, set the x ticks to be 0, 1, 2, and 3. Um, you know, there's too many. And then we can set those labels individually as well um, with the x tick labels. Oop, and yeah, we're trying to do that on the plot object actually. So uh, x tick labels we have to set on the axes itself. So uh, another pattern I prefer, mostly prefer for uh, doing figures is decaling the figure object separately and then uh, pulling out the axes object. Um, by declaring it uh, separately. So we give it the x, y width and height, 0.2, 0.7. And then uh, we'll go ahead and, and reset the, uh, the x ticks and uh, y ticks on the axis object, which use set x ticks and set x tick labels. And there we go. So we can see each of those chemicals. Um, they all range from 0 to 1 here. We just looked at the first 100 observations. Uh, so those ranges might extend if we look beyond just the, the first 100. Um, the color here was set randomly, so there's a number of directions for us to go uh, to turn this into a proper plot. Um, but one, one way to go is here we, we were looping over and making individual, um, individual plots for individual observations, right? But we can actually go ahead and plot them all at the same time. Um, so this doesn't dump to the output of plot.plot. .plot. We'll, uh, we'll declare it in P. What we want to do is we want to still have the index as 0, 1, 2, and 3, but we can just give it all observations. Right, we want it to be uh, four by the number of observations. Uh, so we'll give the transpose. So here would be, uh, you know, the down axis has to agree with the, the zero through three. And uh, you know, uh, we can color it and stuff first. Let's just look at, uh, you know, say the first uh, one thousand data points. Um, so here we go, looking at the first uh, thousand data points. We can see that there's quite a range of uh, values actually. So uh, third chemical. Methyl ulcimoline uh, has uh, all the way up to 120. So one thing we can do is normalize this. So what we want to do is uh, if we want to give each variable a zero to one range, um, this is, we know that they'll start at zero. So this is actually pretty simple. We'll just go ahead and, and divide them by their max. So we'll take that along the uh, the across axis. So the axis zero because we've taken the transpose. Um, so we'll look across for all the variables. Uh, take the first thousand and. Uh, they give us all all the variables. So you can see with a thousand, uh, actually all smushed onto the same uh, onto the same zero to one range. That's that's a little too too much. So uh, we can do a couple things to uh, make this look a little bit better. So we can make them all black, right? And we give them some opacity so that uh, when they stack together, they'll add up to black. Um, but if um, actually, and that's alpha in uh, not not opacity in uh, map. I'm thinking thinking in the web. Um, so when we do that, right, we see that we get, uh, we can, we can see a handful of things, uh, you know, and we can continue to dive into this data by, you know, choosing maybe different colors other than black for each station and seeing where things go together. Um, we can already observe a number of patterns about the data that, that we didn't see in the scatterplot matrix. So both of these are, are useful looks at the data that we have here.